to see an asteroid or meteor. Sometimes they come too close for comfort. This meteor was captured by amateur cameramen before it finally impacted in New York State. But there are massive asteroids orbiting near Earth. Asteroids that would dwarf a modern city. Asteroids that, no matter where they hit, would cause global destruction. If you hit a large metropolitan area with an iron asteroid a mile across, that would be an unimaginable catastrophe for the local area as well as for the world. It would simply obliterate. It would explode with 30,000 megatons of force more power than the entire nuclear arsenals of all the armies of the world. People at Ground Zero would never know what hit them. Millions would die in the first instant. The air, superheated to 9,000 degrees, would ripple outward hundreds of miles and millions more would perish. An entire metropolitan city would be wiped from the face of the earth. The impact would trigger an Armageddon of worldwide disasters. The initial impact would literally cause the whole planet to shake. Every major fault line could fail. First is, a, is an earthquake that, uh, depending on the size and speed of the impact, could be pretty severe and it would be felt all over the world. Billions of tons of Earth, heated white hot, would be hurled into the atmosphere and then fall back to Earth, igniting fires over the entire planet. These secondary impacts would be, there'd be billions of them. They would be all over the world, and they would serve to raise the temperature of the whole atmosphere. If you're outside, you'd be facing temperatures as, as high as an oven set to broiling. There'd be ground fires, forest fires all over the planet. Anything that could burn would burn. The intense seismic activity causes volcanoes worldwide to erupt, blasting ash and smoke into a sky already blackened by raging fires. A black cloud forms around the entire planet. This is not a cloud that causes a day to be dull and gray. This would be a cloud that would cut off all sunlight. The day would be black, the night would be black, and it would probably last for a year. As sunlight is cut off, 
the temperature drops and a nuclear winter scenario begins. If it wasn't already winter time, if it were the northern hemisphere summertime, you could convert summer to winter. It would be raining. The rain would be so much laced with nitrous acid, uh, it would be like the mother of all acid rains. Photosynthesis would shut down. Plants wouldn't be able to survive. People and animals that eat plants would not be able to survive. Uh, and creatures that eat plant-eating creatures wouldn't be able to survive. Death would just go right up the food chain. Finally, as the, the sky finally starts to clear, you get a greenhouse effect, which, which slowly builds up the temperature and could last for hundreds of years. So it's just about every environmental disaster you could think of all happening. It says the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before. When does before happen? Before. Before, before the great and terrible, fearful, holy, frightening day of the Lord. Why is it frightening? Because the people that are not born again, they're going to be scared out of well, their wits. For the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. Everyone's hands will become weak. Every man's heart will melt. They will be horrified. Pain and agony will seize them. They will be in anguish like a woman in labor. They will look at each other, their faces flushed with fear. Look, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with rage and burning anger, to make the earth a desolation and to destroy the sinners on it. Go to Amos chapter 5, verse 16. Let's go on. Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, Wailing shall be in all the streets, mm -hmm. and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandman to mourning. Well, what is a husbandman? Anybody know? Farmer. Pat? Farmer. Farmer Pat. Pat, well, Pat, you're not a farmer. Are you a farmer, Pat? Uh, my mother. Mother, your mother was yes. a farmer. Well, this husbandman is a farmer. Now, this is important. That's why you've got to study a little more than just take, this is King James. So let's, let's go. And they shall call, uh, they shall call the husband to husbandman to mourning. Mm -hmm. Something's going to happen that's going to cause the farmers mm -hmm. to mourn. Hmm. Wow. And such as are skillful of lamentation, lamentation, Lamenting, Lamenting, lamentation, right? it says. Which means crying. To wailing, mm -hmm. crying, mm -hmm. gnashing of teeth, mm -hmm. in all vineyards. Are you listening to me at all? Yeah. All vineyards shall be wailing. What, what is a vineyard? It's a garden. It's a vineyard. That's what it is, a vineyard. <laughs> Actually, a vineyard is a vineyard. It's where you grow grapes, but it also means garden. Okay, it means garden in the Hebrew. It says, and all the vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? There's people that talk about heaven ain't it going there. Do you ever remember that song the Blackwood Brothers used to sing? You don't even know who the Blackwood Brothers are probably because you're so young. Everyone talking about heaven ain't it going there. Kevin, you never heard of that? I haven't. Of course, I know Kevin, the Blackwood Brothers, but I don't know that one. Whatever happened to Uncle Henry, he would have remembered. He would have. He's he would have his remembered. generation, I know. No, but that's the song. <laughs> no, but that's the song. Uh, and, it's a good one. And woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord... Everyone talking about heaven ain't it going there. In other words, to what end is it to you? You've never studied Matthew chapter 7, have you? Hmm? 
Where the Bible talks about yeah. who's not going to be up in heaven. Yeah. yeah, it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father does the will. who is in heaven. Yeah, he said people, people will say, I did this. People actually say, we were dynamite. That's the word dynamite. We were amazing preachers. We had dynamite choirs. We did all this. We did that. And Jesus says, I never knew you. And that's not by the sight. That means relationship. intimate relationship. Same word that Mary used when she said, I've never known a man. I never knew you, Jesus will say. People talk about heaven. Mm. The song says, ain't a going there. Mm. This is what he's saying. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it to you? In other words, what is it to you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Verse 19, and as a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and learned his hand or leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? And as we put all these scriptures together, you're going to see asteroid. You're going to see fiery mountain coming from the sky at, at one point. You'll see the volcanoes going off. And all of them causes the, the sun and the moon to be darkened. A cloud just covering the entire earth. Let's go to Amos chapter 8, verse 8. Let's move along. I, I want to just give you scriptures to let you know where I based my teaching on that the sun is going to go dark before the day of the Lord. Shall not the land tremble for this and everyone mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood and it shall be cast out and down drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, all your songs into lamentation. And I'll bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head, and I'll make it as the morning of an only sun, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the day cometh, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst of water. That's going to happen, but, but this he's talking about, but a famine of hearing the word of the Lord. Right. And if we've ever had a famine of hearing the word of the Lord, it is now. That's right. In verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea, mm. from north even to east. They shall run to and fro, mm. we're there now, to yeah. seek the word of the Lord, this is now, and shall not find it. Mm. Wow. Why? Because they're going from meeting to meeting, from revival to this meeting, that meeting, all hearing about get rich, get more money, how to get rich, how to get more money. They're running to and fro, going from meeting to meeting to get healing. You could call the elders of the church and have them pray and get healed. But we run here, we run there. This is what the Bible says. There's a famine in the last days of the word of the living God. If anybody tries to preach the word, word for word, people say, that's boring. <laughs> they want to be entertained. Yeah, mm. Some preachers are better comedians. They could go on TV. I'll tell you right now, there's very little to laugh about. That's right. In the United States of America. So true. Oh, they're all laughing right now, but the laughter will die one day. You mark it down. But they're going to seek the word of the Lord and not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. 
Wow. What is this? Lack of water. Lack of food. Lack of the word. But lack of the word yes. of the living God. Boy. That's now Does right. anybody have that's a grandson so or a granddaughter yes. or a son or a daughter that's run from God? Yes. When they won't listen to God? Yes. They won't listen to you. Say, grandson, please don't do that. Oh, Grandpa, you're just an old fuddy-duddy. Yeah. You know, I've lived 75 years in a few days. And I'm still not smart. You know, we're too late smart and too soon old, to just right. say. It's a good saying. But you sure would like to have your kids listen a little bit. Yes, you would. Don't go there. Right. The inundation of entertainment and the word of the, the world mm -hmm. is how can, you, how can you compete with that kind of production? How can you compete when the kids can go for 90 minutes and they've been okay. over and over they go and they're convinced that sex is the answer to everything. If you just find that right person, it doesn't make any difference if you're a boy or a girl or, or whatever. It doesn't make any difference. If you just find someone to shack up with, if you just find someone to love you, you're going to be happy ever after. And then the Hollywood people tell you that, and then they get married, and it's being the great love of the world, and it's on magazines, and you women love to read about it. And then six months they're divorcing. You don't care, do you? It's so true. It, it no, is true. But it, I'm telling you, I don't, the this fascination is, forgive of me, I, I'm preaching too much on this point, but there's going to be the famine, guys and girls, famine of the word, and they're going to literally faint or die from lack. Of the word of God. Okay, but the, the rebellion today. It's well, yeah, there's rebellion and, in the land. And you know and kids love to rebel and it is in human nature and, and then the enemy I, comes I, along and then when there's a high calling on a person's life, he'll come and taunt them and and that is why, you know, any of the kids that are here or any of your kids, there's a high calling on their life. It's just like I had to talk with our son Ricky the other day. I, you know, alone in, in my room, I said, Ricky, you have to understand that you are marked by the enemy. You are marked by his hierarchy. Satan has a very organized kingdom. And, and you are marked. And he is coming after you. And you, that is why you've got to have the God in you so strong and, and your belief system so solid and grounded. And that's what's making it so hard for the young people today. There is a famine in this land of the word of God. That's so right. they have right. nowhere to go. That's right. And they run from the, the word. Right. They literally run from the word. Right. What does the Bible say here? Mm. That it says they wander, wander yeah. from sea to sea. To That's see. What it says. That's from west coast to east coast. That's right. They wander from sea to sea. They will search for the word of the Lord, is what it says. And they're searching for something. Yeah. And never ever settle down to hear, to be faithful. Right. To obey the right. word. Well, and they don't want to obey it's today. It's because there's nothing that can satisfy you and fulfill you. There's nothing but the word of the Lord. There's nothing but the Lord. He created us. We, I mean, this is just basic 101 of human beings. The Lord created us with that vacuum inside of us that only he can fill. There's nothing else that can fill it. We can try everything else. Believe me, I've tried most of it all. And nothing fulfills you but the word of the Lord, him himself, which is him. He is the word. And, and that's why people, you wonder, you go from place to place, thing to thing, try, you know, relationship to relationship, trying to fulfill that vacuum, that void inside of you that only God himself can fill. And yet they're going, right here in Amos, it says they're going from sea to sea, from place to place, looking for what? Him, the word. He is the word. And, the, and, the, and he mentions the children over again. Yeah, over here, it really and he says, is incredible. And he, and he says, it's like having an only son who died. Oh. The morning. 
Oh. And that's what the and he said that this is the time when the, the the rebellion, the lack of hearing the word of God, there's going the sun is going to be darkened. You see, you don't read it all. You say, oh boy, that preach is good. Get the children obeying, but you don't want to hear. And right. I will darken the earth in the clear day. Yeah, I will turn your feast into morning. Let's go to Isaiah now. Wow, Isaiah thirteen four. Powerful. The noise of a multitude in the mountains. Like as a great people, a tumult, uh, tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustered the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Wow. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Mm -hmm. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth, or a woman having a baby. They shall be amazed uh, one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Verse 10, Isaiah 13, 10, For the stars of heaven and the consolations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened. Are you all listening? Yes. You didn't know this was in the Bible, did you? You didn't know there was all these scriptures about the, the sun and the moon going dark, did you? I, I mean, it's there. If you don't believe me, oh, find the Bible. It's probably on the shelf somewhere with a big, thick layer of dust on it. Just whoosh, and go ahead and open it up to Isaiah <laughs> chapter. Follow along. For the stars of the heavens, the constellations thereof, shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened. In its going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. This is the Bible. And I will punish the world for their evil, the wicked for their iniquity, their sin. And I will cause the arrogant, the arrogancy of the proud to cease. It's coming. Pride goeth. Before a, fall. Before a fall. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. How many are haughty today? Read, read verse 12. Go on. Read it a little bit. Verse 12 yeah. says this. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Read that again, verse 13. Therefore I will shake the heavens. It's on the screen. And the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Verse 10 says, The stars of the heaven, the constellation therefore shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened. It's going forth. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Verse 13, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. Every part of the earth will move. You know, it's try, I try to explain. You know, when God began to lead me through the revelation in the prison cell, he showed me John on the Isle of Patmos seeing the future in a vision. And it was like John was watching a big screen and surround sound. I mean, it was, the words are, he heard, he saw, he heard, he saw, he saw. It, you know, yes. just over and over, and over and over and over. Just, yeah, sight and sound. And, and there he, he saw the future. And I, I have another piece of video from a, a motion picture. It's several years old now. But if you ever get a chance, to, it's, there's two movies by the same name called Fire from the Sky. But if you ever get a chance to get this one, if you don't understand Revelation, it was crazy when I saw this movie for the first time. Yeah. It was like all, all, 
half the revelation fell into place when I saw it. So okay. I'm just going to show you a couple minutes of it. Please take a look and then think about the scriptures I'm reading to you today. Would you roll that for it, Mondo? You don't always need a telescope to see an asteroid or meteor. Sometimes they come too close for comfort. This meteor was captured by amateur cameramen before it finally impacted in New York State. But there are massive asteroids orbiting near Earth. Asteroids that would dwarf a modern city. Asteroids that, no matter where they hit, would cause global destruction. If you hit a large metropolitan area with an iron asteroid a mile across, that would be an unimaginable catastrophe for the local area as well as for the world. It would simply obliterate. It would explode with 30,000 megatons of force more power than the entire nuclear arsenals of all the armies of the world. People at Ground Zero would never know what hit them. Millions would die in the first instant. The air, superheated to 9,000 degrees, would ripple outward hundreds of miles and millions more would perish. An entire metropolitan city would be wiped from the face of the earth. The impact would trigger an Armageddon of worldwide disasters. The initial impact would literally cause the whole planet to shake. Every major fault line could fail. First is, a, is an earthquake that, uh, depending on the size and speed of the impact, could be pretty severe and it would be felt all over the world. Billions of tons of Earth, heated white hot, would be hurled into the atmosphere and then fall back to Earth, igniting fires over the entire planet. These secondary impacts would be, there'd be billions of them. They would be all over the world, and they would serve to raise the temperature of the whole atmosphere. If you're outside, you'd be facing temperatures as, as high as an oven set to broiling. There'd be ground fires, forest fires all over the planet. Anything that could burn would burn. The intense seismic activity causes volcanoes worldwide to erupt, blasting ash and smoke into a sky already blackened by raging fires. A black cloud forms around the entire planet. This is not a cloud that causes a day to be dull and gray. This would be a cloud that would cut off all sunlight. The day would be black, the night would be black, and it would probably last for a year. As sunlight is cut off, the temperature drops and a nuclear winter scenario begins. If it wasn't already winter time, if it were the northern hemisphere summertime, you could convert summer to winter. It would be raining. The rain would be so much laced with nitrous acid uh, it would be like the mother of all acid rains. Photosynthesis would shut down. Plants wouldn't be able to survive. People and animals that eat plants would not be able to survive. Uh, and creatures that eat plant-eating creatures wouldn't be able to survive. Death would just go right up the food chain. Finally, as the, the sky finally starts to clear, you get a greenhouse effect, which, which slowly builds up the temperature and could last for hundreds of years. So it's just about every environmental disaster you could think of, all happening at once. That's the famous Shoemaker and Levy, those two men you saw there. That That's right. The, uh, they actually were part of, they discovered the fragments hitting Jupiter in 1994. There's several things named after mm -hmm. them. You know, yes. they're from the... Uh, observatory there at the meteor crater by yes. your house. Yes. <laughs> so many times. I literally at one point lived right next to it. And yes. these are the men, these are scientists. Yes. I respect them. These, these people are yes. always looking up. They're like, they ought to be Christians, I'm sure, because they look up all the time. But, uh, and they discovered this tremendous uh, uh, 21 
fragment asteroid yes. that hit Jupiter. Jupiter. That's right. And now just to think about that, what they were describing, that this, an, if an asteroid like that would hit Earth, I was taking some notes as I, would, I, was, as I was watching it, they said that the whole Earth would shake. Well, That's what right. was the previous verse that we just read in Isaiah and then it's verse 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. Yes. Yes. Isaiah 34 is all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. The heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off the vine. And, and uh, as from the indignation of the Lord and verse after verse after verse. But the thing that strikes me with this that this one asteroid shakes the whole earth and it causes every volcano to go off yeah. That's right. and every fault line of every earthquake fault to go off at the same time. Now, Jesus said there will be earthquakes in many places. Right. I guess that would qualify for that, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. But we say, well, well, Jesus, he didn't really mean that. <laughs> You know, he probably just shook the teacups off the shelf or something, you know. But we don't study the whole word to know that, you know, God's wrath mm. is going to come out. God has been so patient yes. and has yeah. given us time yes, he after has. time after time. Mm. It's so good. And let me, let me try to finish up this today. It, I've got a couple more verses. I'm going to skip some of them. But Isaiah... Verse, uh, chapter 50, verse 2 and 3. Uh, Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. This is God. Yes, yes. You don't believe that, do you? I do. Oh, God wouldn't do anything to punish America. <laughs> well, that's an old song that we saying, but I'm telling you, you don't know the word of God. When you mock God, God's not mocked. It says, I make the rivers a wilderness, their fish stinketh, because there is no water, and, and uh, uh, dieth for thirst. I clothe the heaven with blackness, and I make sackcloth. Sackcloth was so black, that's, that's why the Bible keeps using that term. That was a, that's a Bible fabric. Right. Sackcloth and was, ashes, it, remember that? It was that? black and it was rough. Yeah. And thick. Thick. No and, light hardly would get through it. Right. It says, and actually it says in the new century, I can make the skies dark. I can make them black like clothes of sadness. Mm -hmm. All right. Ezekiel 32, verse 7. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. Mm -hmm. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. Now, Jesus comes back in the clouds. Yes. And I tell you this often, but I believe with all my heart, these events bring the coming of the Lord. And that time when the sun and the moon is dark, and I believe that the Bible says, every eye shall see him. In my prison Bible, I went through the whole Bible, and of course, I was doing it over a period of time, and I would write up top, and I would write, brighter than the sun. Mm. God is brighter. Jesus is brighter than the sun. He shines like the sun. Mm. The brightness, all of it. I mean, it, I, it, it's, it's amazing. If I had the energy and the time, I'd love to do a, a prison Bible that I could share with people because it, it, I had the time to go through every word of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But that, that son, that he is brighter, is so in the Bible, you can't, you, you, you can't say I'm wrong. You cannot say I'm wrong about that. I know that. He is brighter than the sun. Yeah. Yes. Well, and if you know how bright the sun is, yeah, don't look at it. No. That's how bright it is. Right. Okay, Jesus, when he comes back, he comes through that cloud, those clouds. And when he comes through, the light 
the light of the world. The Bible says we don't even need lights anymore after Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it, but I know this, that that light that breaks through the clouds, it will circle the globe. The light bends literally mm -hmm. around the earth, bounces off those clouds, and every eye shall see Amen. him. I will cover the heaven, make the stars therefore dark. I will cover the sun with the cloud. The moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. You want to disagree? Who signed this? Saith the Lord God. Ezekiel 32, verse 7 and 8. You don't have to read it unless you want to get some wisdom. Joel chapter 2. I read this earlier the other day, I think, when we opened up the show. Let's close with it. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, Zion. <laughs> Isn't this good? <laughs> Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. <laughs> Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. But what comes next? You, I don't think that's in the song, is it? Sing good. Kevin, how come you didn't put that in the song? Well, it's not that pretty. <laughs> Could you not add a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and a thick darkness? You see how we've done a scissor and paste job on the Bible, people? How many verses have I given you so far on darkness? So and, many. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people. That's what happens when you go to prison. That's how I found this. Mm -hmm. I had so much time on my hands, I could just look it all up. I, I, I'm going to say, that's, what is that? And then I saw this one. And then I, you know, that, that mm. coincides with this over here. As a day of darkness, a gloomy, as a day of clouds and of thickness, and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. This is how fast it's going to happen. It'll be a garden, and then overnight, in seconds, all the vegetation will be burned. Mm. That's what happens in any of these events. That's what happens in a volcano. It says all of America, if, you know, Yellowstone goes, all yeah. of America will be covered in ash. That's right. But it says, this fire devours before them, behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. As a strong people set in battle array. You know, I preached this when I was a young preacher boy. When I was 21, I would preach on this verse. Really? And what I, what I thought this was, and it still may be partially, I thought this was an atomic bomb. Wow. Because do you know what a devouring, the stubble, a fire devouring the fields of stubble, do you know what it sounds like? It sounds like jet airplanes whining. Hmm. Like, you, ever, you ever hear fields burning, big fields burning? Like locusts coming. It's just, it's, a, it's just a roar of an, it whines at, like uh, that fire burning. The, it's exactly the sound. How would John describe the sound and it says, like, no, like the noise on, of chariots on the tops of mountains. Well, how is these? Where else? That's the highest he would go, the top of a mountain. Shall they leap like airplane? Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth his stubble. As a strong people set in battle array before their faces, the people should be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Do you know after Hiroshima, they said, that looked like a ghost parade from hell. That's right. They said everybody was black. Yeah. They had been burnt black. Their skin was hanging down in sheets. Yes. 
They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the walls like men of war. And they shall march every one on his way. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in the windows like a thief. The earth will quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shine. There it is again. Hmm. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong and executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Verse 13 of Joel 3, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, yes. get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Wow. Listen, people. Wow, wow, wow. God's cup of anger is great. You don't want to experience God's wrath. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Yes. How many times does God have to say something? My goodness. Do you think God just made all this up? Just put it in there for his own enjoyment? Mm. No. But we, we have made the very pillars of our belief system in our churches on far less scripture than this. Mm -hmm. But I have never heard anyone even preach on the fact that the Bible says the sun and the moon will be darkened before the day of the Lord. You know what I've learned in the past couple of days of this study? is that, yeah, we do stop too soon because in Acts and in Joel, when he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, we need to figure out why he needs to do that. Why does he need to move like that? It's because of the terrible times that's coming. And the same in Joel, blow the trumpet in Zion. We, then we need to figure out why would we need to blow the trumpet? What's the alarm that he's sounding? I mean, there's always a reason for those things, and we do stop yes. too short. Yeah. And I've learned to just finish the chapter at least and find out why he says these things are happening. Why he says the harvest is coming, put in the sickle. Okay, why am I going to do this work? Right. Because the sun and the moon is going to grow dark and it'll be the time of harvest. I mean, yes. you got to finish. Yes. You know, finish. Yes. when we read about good, Kevin. the great festivals and feasts yeah. would be turned to famine. Yeah. And when we see where we are right now, the September 24th, 5th, 24th, I guess, and 25th is when this uh, yes. Samita year started. That's right. It started on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. The feast days. That's right. The, the holy days. The, uh, the days that... And yet, God says they're going to be turned to famine days. Yeah. Mm. That... That Rosh Hashanah just a few days ago started. That's right. The Semitah year. Right. That the rabbi's talking about. You know, Jim, and, before you go there, I just, you know, after Kevin just said something, then I just continued to finish on because you said at least you, you know, finished reading the chapter. So I thought, well, I'll just look and see after Jim was talking about. There are huge numbers of people in the valley of decision. Because the Lord's day of judging is near in the valley of decision. And this, he's, he's giving us the opportunity. The key to all of this is repentance, is, is turning away from our wicked ways. Right. And he was talking to the, to the body of Christ. He was talking to us to turn. Repenting is to turn and walk away from that thing, whatever that thing 
thing is that is going on in your life, that besetting sin, that thing you keep wanting to go back to, that thing you do go back to, it's, 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 it's decision time. I, I, you know, Jim has said many times, I think we're going to be surprised who we see in heaven and who we don't. <laughs> 